I want to say good evening to you or good morning or whatever time it is, wherever you are. I'm Woodrow Thomas, Bella Vista Missionary Baptist Church. Reverend Jakari P. Davis is our senior pastor. Reverend Calvin J. Abraham is Pastor Emeritus. And uh, Deacon Douglas Phillips is our leader for our educational department, Christian education. And so we're thankful again that we're here on today. We're going to be looking at Lesson 11, August the 16th. Let's pray. Father, thank you now for your kindness and your grace. We are grateful for all that you've done for us. We pray that you'd guide us. We pray that you would speak to us from your word of truth, because your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. We're dealing again with a series of lessons. We've gone through quite a few lessons from the book of Proverbs, as well as the Gospels, and now we're in the book of James. And that's where I'm going to pick up today out of James chapter 2. Our subject is going to be faith without works is dead. And so I want you to remember that we're going to be talking about faith. So I'm just going to put my little card up that says faith. It's going to tell us where we're going to be. And in addition to that, we're going to be looking at one additional thing. We're going to be looking at works. So faith and works. But there is going to be a negative that we're going to have to consider. We're going to have to consider faith without works. And then we're going to be looking at faith with works. Because there's going to be some things that we're going to add to that because faith without works, and that's what we're going to be looking at here, is what we call death. I'm going to call it code blue, okay? That's what we're going to be dealing with today because that's uh, usually the medical term in the hospital. When somebody dies, they call it code blue when somebody is in trouble. So today, let's look at the book of James. What James is telling to us from the second chapter, and we're going to be picking up at verse 14 through 26. I'm going to read it in context. 14 through 26 out of James chapter 2. What do it profit, my brethren, though a man say that he had faith and had not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed. Filled, notwithstanding that you give not those things which are needful to the body, what doeth it profit? Even so, faith, if it hath not work, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God. And thou doest well. The devils believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, thy faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seeing thou have faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled which said, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Ye say then, how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works, when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. That's our context for our reading on today. And I think it's very, very important that we consider some things. What is your health condition right now? What, what is your uh, physical condition? I mean, that's probably important right now since we're going through this COVID-19 situation. But also, what is your condition spiritually? Where it really is your faith? Faith is something or in someone. That means that we need to have a faith. If we have a faith, it ought to be in something or in someone. We need to look carefully at our faith because there should be some evidences if we do say that we have faith. So now let's look at it because when we talk about our subject, faith without works is dead, we're talking about dead meaning uh, not non-existent but 
useless. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're looking at a faith that is useless. How is your faith today? What are you doing? How uh, faithful are you in your commitment and the obedience to the will of God? Those things I think that are very, very important. We know of the book of James. James is the half-brother of Jesus. We know that now he is writing to what we call the uh, 12 tribes of Israel who have been dispersed. Or There's a big word that we call diaspora, D-I-A-S-P-O-R-A. That means that it's a dispersion. We know that the dispersion occurred because of Saul, which is Paul. When you read the 8th chapter of Acts, you're going to find that out that Jesus told the disciples, and he told all of his disciples in Matthew 28 and 19 and 20, that to go out into all the world. But we found out that after he ascended into heaven, they did not do that. They stayed together. And so therefore, God allowed for a man named Saul to persecute the church. Acts 8. Because of the persecution, there was what we call the diaspora, or dispersion. So now when we come into the writing of James, and James is one of the first books in the Testament. It is one of the oldest books of the, New Te of, the old, of the New Testament that has been written. So that's kind of something for your own information. We're going to be looking at some other people in this situation that we're going to be talking about of faith. Faith without works is dead, and we need to understand that a living faith is a fruitful faith. And that's really, really important for each and every one of us. When you do get my notes, you're going to find a chart that I'm going to put in there out of the book of James. It's from uh, Dr. Chuck Swindoll. It's going to give you a, a systematic outline so that you can look at faith and deeds and the background and the characteristics of the book of James. And I think that will be helpful for your information. Today, we're going to just touch on a few of those points in that the book is practical righteousness. That's, that's in general. The book is about practical righteousness. The key Bible references in James, it, it outlines some of the teachings of Jesus Christ that we find in Matthew uh, chapters 5 through 7, even the Sermon on the Mount. Some of the many things that Jesus taught uh, his followers from, from his sermons on the Mount. Also, the wisdom language that we found that we talked about some weeks ago in the book of Proverbs some of those short, challenging speeches you're going to also find in the book of James about loving God and loving your neighbors. James provides a view of life through faith. So as I told you the last time that there is no life, I said, N-O life, no God, N-O God. K-N-O-W life, no life, K-N-O-W God, no God. Well, I want to change that a little bit today in saying that no faith, no God. No K-N-O-W, faith, K-N-O-W, God. So that means that you've got, to, there's an evidence that will be seen in our faith as we walk according to the will of God. There are several outlines that are in our lesson on today. One of them being a true faith response, James 2, 14 through 17. In addition to that, we're going to see a second outline is going to be a true faith works, James 2, 18 through 20. And then in addition to that, we're going to find out that there is a faith that requires being a continual learner or a true faith passes the test. And that's going to be James 2, 21 through 26. So let's, let's kind of weigh into what we're going to be looking at because I think the most important thing is that we know what does faith mean. Require. Faith has a test that it must pass. And that's where we're going to find that out in our first section of our lesson. When we talk about someone coming to you who is in need, how do we react to them when people come to us in need? Do we turn them away or do we walk in accordance to what they're asking us to do? Are we a people who will have faith or are we a people who are going to not have faith? I think that's, that's really, really important for us to really consider how will we be? What kind of people are we going to be? How, how are we when people come unto us? Do we often think about should I, should I not help that person? Or do we automatically find ourselves that the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to reach out and do the best that we can in trying to reach out to them? That's, that's a sign of our faith. 
And it tells us that, that if they have need, we should give them. It said, even so, faith, if it had not works, is dead. And that's what we're saying is, faith without what? Works? What did we say before? It is what? Death. It brings about death. So we don't want to have a faith that is without works. We want to have a faith that is with works. We want to have a faith that really works. Our second point of our lesson tells us that I have works. If somebody asks you about your works, you ought to show them what it is that you have. That I have faith by my works. Thou believest in God, in one God. Also, it says that what? We know that the devils believe also. So that's, that's just to say I believe in God is not enough. You should always be about doing something that shows somebody that your faith is real. People are looking for examples in this life. People are looking for people who are going to hold on to their faith. And so I think that's for us. We talk about this. A true faith has works. That means that there is some evidence that we're going to see. It says, but wilt thou, O vain man, I'm in verse 20, that faith without works is what? Dead. That means that, that if you don't have any works, that means that what? As I said before, we're going to use the word, you're in code blue. You're dead. You're on your way. Because what? It takes a faith. It takes a faith. If you're going to be alive, there ought to be some evidences, and we're going to show you a few of those. There are some evidences if you are doing the work of God. If you say, I have the faith, I believe in God, then therefore, as the old people used to sing that song, you ought to show some signs. It's one of the old songs that we used to sing. So there ought to be some things that are going to be evident in what we do. A good faith, unused, is no faith at all. That's what we're dealing with in that first section of our lesson. Talks about an unused faith. When there's opportunity, what do we do? We turn our back on the opportunity. A true faith does something. True faith works. That means to have faith, faith it takes time. Um, you have to grow in faith. As I said, grow in the faith and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's just not something, if you're a new Christian, it's not something that you're going to start today and then all of a sudden you're going to have great faith. No, it, it's, it's an exercise. It's time that you take. It is time and experience. That's how we grow our faith. Faith requires being a continual learner. And, you'll, and you can look at that in, in St. Luke chapter 2, verses 49 through 52. We need to be comprehensive. We need to be comprehensive learners, always desiring to learn. This is a great opportunity right now. We're in this COVID-19 season where we've been kind of uh, not having an opportunity to do a lot of things. But you ought to take advantage of some of the extra time that you do have and don't waste it. Reading your Bible, getting to know what God's Word has to say, getting to know uh, even your neighbors. Uh, I've, had a, I've had a great time in and sharing with my neighbors. My neighbors had recently uh, gone out of town. They had recently gone away. And, and um, my wife and I, when they got ready to leave that morning, I was out on the driveway. They left early in the morning going to Wyoming. I was out on the driveway with a little gift bag that we had for them and uh, a daily bread and some prayer. Trying to show them that, what, I'm concerned about you. We want to pray for you. We want to let you know that God cares for you and that we're going to be lifting you up in prayer. And, uh, and they were really amazed at that. We've done it quite a few times when they travel because they travel quite a bit. But then on their, upon their return, and they returned on yesterday, when they came back to their home, on the back door of their house, we put a sign on there saying, welcome home, we missed you. Why? That's what we're trying to do is we're trying to exercise our faith. And then underneath all of that, we say, we've been praying for you and God bless you. An opportunity for us to be able to show and exercise and share, share the faith of God with somebody. But you know what that takes? That takes me being a continual learner. That takes work. It takes work. It takes work. It takes more work. Sometimes everybody I know, I, you're probably saying that, you know, what well, my neighbors are not loving. That's okay. That's their responsibility. But your responsibility is this. 
It is to have faith with works. That's what God wants you to do. You ought to have some evidence. And the evidence is, I'll just put them right there. You got life. There's hope. You have a belief in God. There's righteousness. These are just a few of the things that are in the text that shows us that, that, that it proves that we do have faith. Let's, let's continue as we conclude today. So therefore, faith should be transforming. That means that if I say I have faith, that ought to be an evidence. It means that there ought to be some things seen in my life that ought to show that my life has been changed. And I think that's really, really important. Um, we're going to look at two individuals. We're going to look at Abraham. You know Abraham, the father. Uh, Abraham, as we call him, uh, the one who God called him to leave his home and go to another place where God would truly bless him. We know that he was obedient. Think about this, because he came up in a pagan time when there were other religions that did not honor God. So therefore, in being born into his, his father, we know that as his father passed on from the heirs of the Chaldeans, he had to move on to a place where God wanted him to be, and that would be from Haran to the Canaan land. We know that it's going to, it took faith on his part because we find out that later on in his experience of life, he is going to not only be someone who was obedient to the will of God, we know that his faith is going to be tested. And that's where that last section in our lesson talks about that you've got to have a true faith that passed the test. All of our all of our faith is being tested right now with what we're going through. We don't know when this is going to end. But can we say I'm, I'm being obedient to the will of God? Can we say that I'm, I'm continuing to be faithful unto God? Can we, can we continue to say that I'm doing those things I believe that God wants me to do? Look at this. Because as he said here in the 23rd verse, it said, The scripture was fulfilled, which said, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him of righteousness. What did I say before? There's some evidence. If I have faith and there are works, then there is what? Evidence. That means that something shows that what? I have a faith that works. Now, if I don't have any works, what happens? There's no evidence. And then the Bible clearly tells us without it, there is what? What I call what? Code three. There's death. But what we want is we want to have faith. We want to have a faith that, that is with works. So that means that then others can see. Those uh, others who are around me, when I go into the store, when I'm, when I'm up and down, when I'm on my job, whatever I'm doing, my family members, my relatives, my neighbors, my friends, they can see that something has happened to me that my life has been changed. So here... When, when his test came, that means that he was supposed to go up and sacrifice his son. He was obedient to the will of God. And we know, you know, in the 22nd chapter of Genesis, you know actually what happened. When he got ready to raise his hand to take his son's life, then the angel of God said, look there. And there in the bush, there was a ram that was a substitute for the sacrifice that he made. Secondly... There was also Rahab. We know that when they had gone and now headed into the Canaan land, into the promised land, uh, Joshua sent out spies. And when he sent the spies out, and you'll find that in Joshua, the second chapter, uh, and that's uh, really the entire second chapter, clearly he dealt with Rahab. Rahab was a harlot. But out of that is a descendancy that's going to come all the way down because of Rahab's ob uh, obedience and the desire you're going to find in the descendancy, you're going to find what David. It's going to come all the way down through that heritage. It's going to come all the way down through that, through that bloodline of obedience. So here it is in that second point. It says that likewise was not Rahab the harlot justified by works. Works has benefits. It means that you can be justified. And saying that when she had received the messages... And had sent them out another way. As for the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So what we are saying is that what? This is what you get. 
When you don't have what? Faith. When you don't use it and it doesn't come with works, it leads to what? Death. But think about it. When we use the works, our faith with our works, then what do we have? There are some evidences that you're going to find out. So now the question is, as I conclude now, what kind do you have? Is your faith dead? Or does your faith have evidence? The key thing to find out if it is dead or if it has evidence is going to be determined by what? The works. That's what this is all about. It is showing to us that either we do or we don't. And that's a choice that is left up to you. I think that we now can exemplify our growing faith in the time that we spend in the Word of God, in the time that we spend praying, in the time that we uh, spend look at searching the Word of God. I think our challenge today, and that's my, that's my as, as Reverend Bingham would always say, the takeaway. Our takeaway would be our challenge is to tell you that you need to continue to grow in your faith. Grow in your works. As you exercise, it's almost like uh, lifting weights. You keep on, what happens is you're going to be stronger. There's some evidence. Somebody can see, wow, you're losing weight. You're, getting, you're looking a little bit better. Things are working out in your life. There's some evidence because of what? I'm taking my faith, but I'm putting behind my faith some what? Works. And then I will have what? An evidence. But the concluding point is, without it, what did I say before? It's death. Code blue. Where are you today? Where is your faith today? What are you doing today? Where is your relationship today? That's our challenge today is because, as I shared before, the condition of life is sin, but the resolution is Jesus Christ. May you find encouragement in God's word this day. Father, we thank you for all that you have done. We pray today that those who profess their faith, their works will give evidence. And they will not find themselves as being without you. We pray today, O oh God, that as the word is going forth, as, as people study uh, these Sunday school lessons, I pray, O oh God, you transform their minds by the renewing of the Holy Spirit. I pray, O oh God, that you forgive us of our sins. Forgive us where we've fallen short. But be merciful unto us now and help us in time to develop our faith. Help us to walk close with you. Help us to be obedient to your will. Help us to examine our lives and relationship with you into the time that we give to you. And then be committed to some you time with you, our God. We say we thank you now. We praise your name. We give you the glory. Thank you for faith. Thank you for works. Thank you that there are some evidences when we obey your will. In Jesus' name.